<laughs> Joey said the only way you're going to get pussy is if you take one of his free kittens. Fuck Joey C. That old fuck. <laughs> <laughs> oh, really? Damn. <laughs> All righty. How's everyone doing? All right. Are do you this. in a hospital bed, dude? Drew, you in a hospital bed? We can't hear you. Can't hear you. I there think you he's go. waiting for us. Can you hear me? There, there, there you go. Yeah. There we go. Do I sound clear or no? Yeah, you yeah. sound clear. Dude. Yeah. Cool, cool. All right. Welcome so to the on this podcast. <laughs> Check out the episode description for the show and guests, social media. Check our website, gagonthispodcast.com. Email us, gagonthispodcast at gmail.com. Send all your right-wing hate mail to the stand-up dads. At Fuck gmail. you. <laughs> Make sure to like and follow our Facebook page. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. You can watch the recording and hear the episode two days before it is released. I am Big Nick. I am joined always by my Portuguese lover that is Rob. Hello. Joined by the Italian getting tan stallion that is Danny G. <laughs> What's up? Joined by Sacramento Poet Laureate, Sharon. Woo! And we got none other than co-host of the Fill My Heart podcast, Drew motherfucking Absher. Yay! Hey, everybody. Hey. It's so weird hearing, like, professional intros like that. Like, me and Parker, like, sometimes even forget to hit record. <laughs> <laughs> they do Very start into it. <laughs> Don't yeah, worry, yeah. start talking. <laughs> Rob did that uh, for one of the podcasts, and apparently it was the it best was. part of the podcast. It was. It was. I felt bad. That's the no. worst. Me and Parker will do that sometimes, like, right before we start recording. Someone will just say something that's, like, the lead-in of a great story, and then we're just like, wait, no, save it. And then, but like the, it's never it's the, the same, same. It's never spontaneous the same. moment. It fucking <laughs> sucks, dude. <laughs> so I got to yeah. say thank you for um, sitting up for this interview. I watched <laughs> the verbal insults and you were like laying on your stomach. You look like a yeah. little girl, like talking to her boyfriend. Yeah, yeah. That's, that was kind of the vibe I was going for is I had my feet up. Uh, I was kicking them back and forth. Like I was, I was twirling <laughs> the phone cord too. Um yeah, I, I, do, I don't leave my room very often these days. So I'm just like, sometimes I'll like sit with my legs against the wall and play Madden. Like it's, I really am just putting together a hell of a franchise mode in Madden right now. So <laughs> what Madden? Kind of been 20. Yeah, it sucks, dude. That's the crazy thing about the quarantine is like, I'm playing video games that are objectively bad. Like the whole thing is fucking sucks ass. And like, like I played WWE 2K20 which like when it came out was just widely hated like and it glitches like a motherfucker it like it, i mean nick like your background is like overlapping with your mic right now like that's what the game does like mm -hmm. we're like the ropes like the fucking ring ropes will just go into your fucking wrestler and then you just fall out of the ring it's bananas but i just play it because i'm so fucking bored right now do they still make smackdown versus raw no man that would be great because i love that game when's the last I got time you made that I think it was only like a two or three time thing. That was probably like 2000 shit, probably like 2006, Nah, man, I have like five of them. Really? Yeah, they made it for a while. The PS2, that was where all the fucking good wrestling yeah. games happened. Because you know what they used to do with wrestling games is they used to just name them after like wrestlers catchphrases. Sure. So like that was like always fun because then you never, like you could just do crazier shit with different developers. But now they just like have moved it to like 2k and 2k fucking is bad at making video games like i don't know why people think they're good at making video games they suck ass at it so like i agree like even nba 2k is like probably the most overrated video game since like it hasn't been good since like 2016 2017 and people just fucking hype it up Damn. like crazy i played yeah. nba 2k 16 because it was a free game and they have i think 2k 20 as a free game for ps4 yeah and god it is i just miss NBA Jam, and then there was a game on PlayStation where you could just play three on three, and it was like street core, street style. I miss okay. those games. Yeah, the blacktop. Well, dude, like, it, it's good you brought that up because I think the real downfall of sports video games particularly is the realism. Like, if I wanted to fucking throw interceptions in Madden, I would have tried to be a real quarterback. Like, I want, it to be, I want it to be impossible to fuck up. Like, that's the whole reason I'm playing video games. I want there to be zero consequences for mistakes. But they, like, make it, like, I was just playing Madden before I logged on here. 
uh, I had seven throwing touchdowns. I was going for eight. And then, like, the ball gets tipped eight times and the dude picks it off. I'm like, that shouldn't happen. <laughs> like, <laughs> just let me have my fun. <laughs> like, wh- why? What, what do you gain from fucking me over here, Madden? But it's all right, man. I'm, I'm learning. I knew, one, I knew one guy that um, he basically sued um, EA Sports because he was playing college ball. And they actually took all that, you know, all the footage. You know, you don't get you don't get paid for college ball. Sure. So when he got so ten years later, after they basically came a hit and stuff, then they basically then he noticed that they're making millions of dollars off his name, oh, off, yeah. his, off his reference and stuff. So he had he basically sued him because of you know medical reasons. But yeah, and he yeah, won. I mean the NCAA is so fucking scummy yeah. with that shit, dude. It's it's truly, it's, I mean, like not to be dramatic, but I mean it's very similar to like like involuntary servitude because like most sports leagues like just force you into the NCAA and then you can't make and you know up until like a couple years back like I remember when Johnny Manziel was still in college like you if you went to the like the NCAA website and typed in his last name it would bring up his jersey yeah so, like, they clearly are acknowledging that they're profiting off these players, but then they're just like, no, you know, you can just buy a, you know, a Texas Tech jersey with the number seven on it. And it's like, yeah, but you, it's, if you, on your fucking search engine, it's acknowledging that it's the guy, dude. Yeah. I, that's why I'm happy, like, with all these people getting paid now. Like, a lot of states have passed a lot of legislation that allows the players to get paid. So, um, I think that's big. And that's going to just only encourage, like, salaries in the NBA and, NFL to go up and it's gonna be fucking tight, dude. I'm excited for it. I'm all about players. The players did all pay, the dude. state colleges. Yeah, all state yeah. colleges are all paying now. Yeah, that's but badass, it's, dude. But isn't it until two, 2022 or something like that? Yeah, it's a little bit ways out. I think yeah. it's that, that kind of shit, especially with like what's going on with like the Washington Redskins and stuff. Oh, yeah. Like a lot of that stuff is truly because they already have everything fucking printed up. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like they already have all the jerseys and shit made. So like, to go back and add name last names to it would be so fucking expensive that they're like, hey, can we just put it off for a year? Change your name to the Rednecks and change the Indian Red to a mullet. <laughs> be all set. Bad idea. That's <laughs> not a bad idea. Rednecks. Wow, that's... You wouldn't have to change much. Just lighten them up wow. a little bit. Give them a mm-hmm. mullet. And you're ready to go. <laughs> lighten them up a little bit. Just use a filter. It's fine. I it's say fine. they. I say what they do is they just change their name to the Washington Indians and then use Chief Wahoo, the Cleveland Indians old logo. <laughs> well, Cleveland's getting rid of it too. <laughs> I know, but that would be funny if they just adopted all of the shit that the Indians got rid of. <laughs> <laughs> they just hijacked. <laughs> Yeah, they start like doing rain idea. dances during the halftime show. Yeah, yeah. Have the cheerleaders wear headdresses. Do Just go yeah. hey, You know, it, the like speaking of WWE. The Washington Redskins should just become heels and just completely embrace the hatred and just actually just scalping. make it more yeah, just more make it more offensive. A halftime scalping. Keep, yeah. 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 Then, then you sleep. got the you got the attitude era. So what if all of a sudden the heels become the baby face? I mean, look at the Rock. Mm. He was a great yeah. heel. Now yeah, he's... right. That's true. Danny, do you know what we're talking about? I know the Rock. I know who the Rock is. <laughs> okay, <laughs> that's so funny. I was actually like, I, I I got high as shit last night and resubscribed to the WWE Network, and because uh, I do that like once a, every couple months, where I just get fucking absolutely blasted and then just go and pay ten dollars a month to watch backlash 2005 and, uh, <laughs> but dude i was watching william regal wrestle last night and i was like i never liked this guy as a kid and he's the coolest motherfucker in the world now like he's just like over the top british character <laughs> so cool i love it nice all and right well let's coach anyway i'll shut up and then, oh, then we got hairy ass Joey C just walking around in the background. <laughs> what the fuck? Do you have pants I mean, on, Joey? It is his house. He can do whatever he wants. True. Does he have pants on? No. He does he's not. He's not wearing a bathing suit. He's not wearing a bathing suit. He's <laughs> All right. Naked. All right. So let's let's talk about comedy, Drew. Um, the earliest post I could find about you doing comedy was in 2016. Is that when you started? Um. I think I actually technically start. Yeah, I started in 2015 technically, but like for most people, like I feel like this is the case. Is like you do like one open mic a month for like four months, just to get like Facebook profile pictures out of it, and then you actually start liking it, and then you start doing that. So yeah, I started in like October of 2015, or I did my first open mic in November of 2015, 
and then maybe went to like one open mic every couple weeks and then I got booked on a show in for like March 2016 and so then like January 2016 I like was going every week and trying to like get better at it and then kind of just took off from there I've taken breaks like that's the thing because I started so young man like it so like I, I really admire people who are able to like start at 19 20 years old and then just like yeah. head down and keep doing it because I didn't have that like I came from a sports background I played sports my whole life so like in sports you have like an off season where there's not as much pressure but in comedy like there's no off season you're just constantly doing it so I never got to like kick my feet up so I would kind of build in these breaks for myself or you know I was going to like maybe one open mic a week instead of six or whatever and so there were some developmental delays in those times, but for the most part, it's been almost five years completely on. So, damn, yeah, because I, I was shocked to see the first post was in February, and then all of a sudden you're booked on a show in March. I mean, that's pretty quick. Yeah, yeah, I was actually well, yeah, I, I was lucky. I, I that's how I put it is I think it was like a perfect balance of like being funny enough and having brought friends to open mics because like. Kyrie Shabazz booked me on my first show ever at Punchline, oh, nice. um, which, like, at the time, I was like, oh, cool, I'm just going to be, like, and I, I, you know, I, I was taking a comedy class at the time, and so um, I was able to kind of piece it together and not make a complete ass of myself. Dude, my first, that, that show at Punchline, like fucking sucked because what happened <laughs> what happened was Kyrie showed up like extremely sick mm -hmm. and like like flu symptoms like coughing like like throwing up in the green room and stuff if I remember correctly and so he was like I'm not gonna host tonight I'm just gonna like uh I'm gonna I think he sent someone like like maybe Ellis Rodriguez out or something to host just to bring up the first comic and then the comics were supposed to roll into each other and uh he booked this guy, I forget what his name is, and I don't think he did comedy much after it, but he booked him, and then, you know, everyone was supposed to do, like, five minutes, and this guy did, like, maybe 15 minutes of just oh, bombing his cock off. <laughs> like, one of the worst bombs I've ever seen. But, like, he was doing that thing that when people are bombing where they don't acknowledge that they're bombing whatsoever. Like, they think that they're, like, they're killing it, man. They're yeah, well, but it, it's not even that they – I mean, yes, because, like, they think that they're doing well enough to justify running the light like that, but it's more of they're just, like, continuously searching for a big laugh. Like, they don't acknowledge, like, this isn't going well. They acknowledge, like, man, I got to figure something out to break this crowd open. So he's just bombing his dick off. And then, like, I'm going up next. And then the crowd's, like, completely dead at this point. And then Kyrie comes and grabs me on the shoulder – He's like, I'm going to go up there and just try to get him back for you. And I was like, all right, cool. And then Kyrie does like 15, 20 of his just best shit. I mean, punchline is fucking <laughs> like, people are on the ground. And I'm like, this could not be worse for me. Like, yeah. I thought I was going to follow this horrendous bomb. And instead, I'm following 15 to 20 minutes of Kyrie Shabazz's best material. Like, he's doing crowd work, just like fucking wrecking. And then I go up with like my fucking five minutes of like – poorly developed material and i did fine but it was just funny i just remember that like just the fucking reality of comedy is that someone better than you is always going to be in front of you <laughs> fucking Kyrie took me out to a show in stockton um last year and he was like yeah he's like i'll give you we'll do you do five minutes and then i'll go up there and i'll close out the show and then when we got there he was like you know what just you just go and they were all like we want Kyrie. We want Kyrie. And I'm like, he said I could have his time. I'm sorry. Oh, <laughs> they were just like, fine, whatever. And I'm like, thanks a lot, Kyrie. <laughs> Fucking A. But yeah, yeah he's, he's when, great. Kyrie one time, like after one of my first open mics, I was like leaving with my friends and he just like bombarded my friends and just like made fun of them for like 10 minutes. And they have no <laughs> idea who the fuck this guy is. Like I've... <laughs> I'm like vaguely familiar with him and he's just like like calling my friends white devils and asking them what time he's like why are you guys leaving you guys got lacrosse practice at night and shit and my <laughs> friends are just like who the fuck is this guy nice. pretty funny you do look like a lacrosse player yeah I know. <laughs> can't run away can't, yeah. stifler style <laughs> <laughs> 
Are there even? There's no high schools around here that play lacrosse, right? Like maybe Bella Granite Vista Bay. does. Really? Bella Vista had a well, well. I'm in. I'm from Elk Grove, so like all of the, like there were lacrosse players, but they like there wasn't. It wasn't school organized, so they would like just kind of like meet after school and shit and play like club lacrosse. Okay. Which, which actually sounds fucking worse, but. <laughs> right. <laughs> So I gotta White ask. People love being in clubs. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. We do. We love them. <laughs> we like um, to be part of something. Fuck it. So I gotta ask. Uh, I recently saw a post from, I think it was Johnny Taylor, how he put a list of the people he liked watching most, and you were on there. Yeah. Um, how did that make you feel? Uh, you know what, man? Like, I know it sounds like fucking, like, shitty halftime athlete talk, but, like, I really try not to, like, uh, digest too much, like, positivity or negativity about me. Like, I, I, it sounds like fucking false humility, I know. But I really just – it's better for my mental health if, like, I just treat – like, I obviously appreciate it. I love Johnny. You know, he's, a, he's been very good to me over my couple years doing this. But, like – Whenever I see stuff like that, I'll just comment like, thanks, dude. And then like, just try not to read anyone else because then people interject with like, oh yeah, I do love so-and-so or yeah. Or, you know, and so it's just like, then I'm like, wait, why doesn't that person post about me? And you know, so then like <laughs> you get caught up in all that shit. And I, I just, I fucking hate Facebook. Like I just try to stay off there in general. So then when I see shit like that pop up, it's like, fuck, like now I got to pay attention to this stuff and it's just a nightmare. <laughs> I'm just a fucking head case, dude. Most male comics are. Oh, yeah. Comics Most are. female comics are, too. I am. Most clear. people are. Yeah. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> so you did the SAC Comedy Fest, and you placed third, which is freaking amazing. Yeah. Yeah. How was, how was that? Because we've heard some people say they actually really like comedy festivals, and then we've heard some people say it's just too much pressure. Well, festivals are fine. Competitions suck. That's what that was, the SAC comedy competition. Because they they have a festival and a competition that, like, fall within, like, a couple months of each other. But um, you know what, man? Like, I understand why people hate competitions. But like I said, dude, like, I, I played sports my whole life. So, like, it's it's actually easier for me to, like, internalize comedy as a competition. Like, and it's kind of fun for me, honestly. Like, I right before the pandemic started, like literally the day before everything was forced to close down. Um, it's, it feels so long ago to say this, but it was the day Tom Hanks announced he had COVID. Yeah. Like, that sounds, that feels like a fucking millennium ago. Um, <laughs> but uh, I, I was, I did the laughs unlimited competition uh, oh. and like the top two people advanced and I finished second nice. and like everything felt like it was like on the up and up. And then literally the next day it was like, you're not allowed to leave your house. So like, uh, but whenever I do competitions, I actually I actually do enjoy them because like I have a pretty good five to seven minutes of just stuff that I can like crush with, and so I'm just confident in my material. And then like I know that other people are nervous about it, so I just try to go up there and go like everyone else is nervous. If I'm less nervous than them, I'm already off to a good start. So, but I get why people don't like them. It's just it's they don't it's want not to natural. Suck. <laughs> yeah, I mean maybe I guess. I guess it might be that. I also, I just think it's that, like, it feels weird to make art competitive, you know? Even Battle the Bands is a weird thing because it's so subjective. Yeah, you know, there's true. not, the thing about sports is, like, you win or lose. You do good or you don't. Like, in yeah. comedy, like, there's people that, like, you know, if you get in front of a crowd, like, literally the week before the Laughs Unlimited competition, I did a competition at Rooster T Feathers and, like, thought I should have placed, you know? But then, like, they took other people, and I was just like, fuck this. Like, I got mad. And I'm like, why am I getting mad? It's all subjective, you know? So so just a random question. Since you're a sports fan, are you, like, one of those avid sports fans that, like, if nothing's on but cricket is on, you'll watch it? Yeah, I'll watch anything, dude. Cricket's uh, good. Yeah, but see, like, that's it. It's like, then you fall into, like, bocce ball is pretty good, you know? And then you're like – you're like, I'm, I'm clearly just jonesing for anything. Like, it's not really that I'm enjoying it. I, I used to wake up, like, when I was in high school, I would wake up at, like, 3 o'clock in the morning to watch, like, the Winter Olympics and stuff. Just because I fucking like sports. You know, yeah, that I'm, curling I'm like competition that. got me going a couple years off. ago. I was at the bar watching curling, and I was like, yeah, go! Like, yeah. get it! 
It's, Dude, you know what my favorite fucking sport is that like no one ever talks about is a uh, like team handball. Have you guys ever oh, watched that? Yeah. Oh, okay. it's like yes. it's like a fucking mix between like basketball and mm-hmm. soccer. Yeah. So like you have to like dribble, but you can only take like three dribbles, mm-hmm. and then you got to get stamina. rid of the ball. And the ball's maybe like the size of like a, a slow pitch softball. Yeah. yeah. And then you kind of like throw it into a net, dude. It's fucking badass. Like. It would be, like, I think it truly would be, like, the biggest sport in America. Like, LeBron James playing that shit would be incredible. <laughs> like, it would be so fun to watch. But, you know, everyone just puts their energy towards, like, way better shit over here. <laughs> like, so. That yeah. would be, like, something you'd see on, like, ESPN Ocho. Yeah, yeah. That's exactly. <laughs> well, that's, a, that's where you watch it is it's, like, it's, like, the 50th, like, uh, Summer Olympic game that they put on. It's, like, literally on TV at 3 o'clock in the morning on like a Tuesday during the summer Olympics because no one watches it, but it's fucking awesome. I love that shit, dude. I love it. I love just like, I, cause the nice thing about the Olympics is you get to see what other countries are dealing with. Oh, yeah. Like you get to see like what like Sweden's best athletes look like. And they always, they always are just built like, uh, like your friend's stepdad who like, you never like felt his body, but you knew it was like hard. You know My what I mean? Where it's kind. like, He's like out of shape, but his stomach is just like a rock. You know what I oh, mean? Yeah. Like bad bod. <laughs> yeah. It was just hard yeah. around you. Favorite kind. <laughs> Love that good stepdad bod. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You're gross, Danny. Um, I know. I know. Hey, you have a stepdad bod. You're not even a fucking dad. Wow. <laughs> yeah. I got, I don't know. I don't know if you've listened to the podcast, but we measured my boobs. I have the biggest boobs aside from Danny um, on the podcast. I mean, it's the other two other guys, so that's not like crazy. Yeah, but I'm way fatter than him. <laughs> yeah, so. and and David Thorne. David Thorne's were smaller too. Yeah, you know David Thorne. Yeah, I got bigger tits than him. Yeah, he's like a good C cup, Drew. David is that body I was talking about, though, where it's like, uh, yeah, I've, I've never felt David's stomach, but I know that it it'd be like, have you pooped in the last year? Like that's how his stomach feels, just like contracted abs for some reason. You're like, dude, are you okay? <laughs> I love how old were you when you started comedy? Because you said you were super young. Uh, I don't know 20. how old you are now. 20? Uh, okay. I'm 25 now. Yeah, I was 20. Okay. Which, like, yeah. That was yeah. that was interesting, dude. Yeah. It was just, like, waiting outside fucking bars to do sets and stuff. And, like, bouncers oh, yeah. having to walk you onto the stage and stuff. It's very interesting. Okay. Especially, I was kind of looking back on it. Like, I grew up in the suburbs, you know, for, like, my teenage years. I was in South Sac for my my childhood which was you know a little bit rougher but like i was in the suburbs for my teenage years and you realize like oh yeah people actually do cocaine like you just didn't know that (laughs) i just didn't know that until i started doing comedy and i'm like oh fuck like this is something that happens Hmm. i thought you were gonna be like i didn't even know to know that until i started doing coke (laughs) <laughs> in, in the suburbs I, th- yeah. I thought i was the only one i'm I, I found, a <laughs> found your people my kid yeah. ah, that booger sugar yeah. um so i do want to talk about i didn't see any posts about it but your profile picture you did a comedy show for breast cancer in october of last year i think yeah yeah, yeah. that was that was a fucking that was a cool experience man like it's very you know once you get around like kind of like the fundraiser crowd is a crowd that is very intimidating for me because like there's like crowds that I know I don't do well in front of and the like the majority of that crowd is built up of rich white people like rich white people just do not like my shit whatsoever really never done never never Uh like it it's very interesting white people don't have much of a sense of a humor yes they do yeah well, I think that my shit's just kind of more tailored towards like uh, like a younger demographic and rich white yeah. people tend to be a little bit older. So like, that's where I struggle the most. So like when I got asked to do this breast cancer show, which was cool, like they paid me in a tax write off. So they, <laughs> they were just, yeah, because they were like, we can't afford to pay you guys, but we can give you a receipt that says that you did this charity work. And then you guys can write how much you would have charged. Sweet. And then use that as a write-off, which $1, I don't know. dollars. I don't know if I'm committing like a, a RICO offense or something right now. So, I, I don't know. <laughs> um, but uh, but yeah. So then we like went on the news and dude, the fucking oh my god, man, that pissed me off so much. The fucking I still remember, news. I still remember yeah. that, um, that footage when you showed it off in your show. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, fucking uh, dude, the news. Uh, they 
they like set me so i like i've always heard this from hearing like you know my favorite comedians talk is that like when you do local news they like set you up for bits you know mm-hmm. so they'll be like hey uh you know like i heard you work out or something like that and then you do a joke about the gym and they're like is there any bits that like you feel and i'm like not really like i don't really want to do this and they were like we'll think of something and then we'll do it I'm like, all right cool so i just set up a bit and, or i had them like set me up for a bit and then i did it and it worked fine like the the lady i don't know if she was like you know just obligatorily laughing or what but and then like my friend's like hey i saw you on the news and i'm like oh shit so he sent me the link and then i watched the link dude and they added like a fucking sarcastic ass laugh track after everything i said (laughs) i'm like fuck you guys like you guys set me up for this shit and then you're gonna do like this fucking hacky 80s sitcom laugh track behind me and i was like Dude, it was so insulting. I was like, dude, this is so fucked up. You guys should not be allowed to do this to people. <laughs> it was fucking mean. Yeah. You said that you were like, um, weren't you like tired or just not just basically a little zoned out listening to them talk and you're like, okay. Yeah, because I know you Yeah, were, kind were, of. Yeah. Well, because I, I, I left, so I was like, at the time I was going to school from like 7.30 was my first class yeah. to like 4.30. So then, like, I was there, I was at school at, like, you know, 6.45 in the morning, so I was up at, like, 5.30, and then, so I left my first class early, went over to the the show, and by the time I got there, like, I stopped to get a Starbucks or something, because I was so fucking tired, and, uh, yeah, and then that's, I think that was actually the bit that we set up was, like, about, I have a joke about coffee, yeah, yeah, yeah. (laughs) and so I think that was the joke we actually set up, and, uh, then they just fucking insulted me in front of the world. And I had told people I was going to, like, be on the news and stuff. So then people were watching. And <laughs> just so <laughs> fucking embarrassing, dude. Uh, fucking assholes. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I like about, um, I think it was Tom Segura. Whenever he does, he did this morning news, local news oh, thing. Yeah. And he showed up just dressed like a gangster. And he oh, was yeah, talking DJ about Dad how this. Mouth. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, DJ Dadmouth. <laughs> when he says, he just, he tells them he only wants to talk about his music. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and then they're they're asking about another comic, and he's like, yeah, me and him, we got beef. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and, and here's Santino will go on there, and he'll use his, like, fake-ass voice, and he'll be like, so, what did you think of that? And he'll, like, just turn it around back on him, and he'll be like, so, uh, yeah. yeah. And I'm like, yeah, you, you guys are fucking fake as shit. Yeah, well, dude, that was, so we did, like, a, a morning radio show to promote that thing as well. And uh, I just, I guess I just never realized, like, how, like, how she must be to work in, like, FM terrestrial radio. Because yeah. we'd be having like an insanely good conversation going, and then the the host would be like, "All right, let's pause it right there because we're gonna get back to Chris Brown." And you're like, "Oh fuck, <laughs> what a fucking terrible <laughs> life to live!" Like you have to fucking. And then like he would just be like, after he said that and like did like you know said his joiner and then went back into the music, he'd be like, "So what were you guys saying?" I'm like, "No, the conversation's over, man. You can't just <laughs> inject like yeah. fucking music into it and then keep us going." But it was a fun experience, man. Like, it, it's very cool anytime that, like, especially at my level where you get to, like, see what a future in this kind of looks like. Even the shitty parts of it, like traveling for shows and stuff like that. And um, it's, 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 it's exciting, at least. So, like, even though I didn't necessarily have, like, a good time on okay. either of those things, it was still exciting to be like, oh, shit, like, if I make it, this is what it looks like. So it's cool, you know? Now, what... I've tried to figure this out. I've looked at the picture. Is your shirt when you're getting interviewed a basketball and then a reflection of that basketball? No, it's uh it's um it's the brand Supreme. They did a collaboration with the MC Escher family. And so it's a piece of art that the artist MC Escher made. But that's a good observation. It does kind of look like a basketball with the reflection of a basketball. That'd almost be a cooler shirt, but uh, <laughs> but they made they just told me to wear pink, and that was like the only pink shirt I had. So that was pink. It looked like yellow. Does it? it did look- on the picture? Yeah. <laughs> huh. Let me look real quick. At least to my. I guess it does. No, it does kind of look like that. That's just the lighting of the the room we're in, though. Yeah. Yeah, it's a pink shirt. <laughs> oh yeah, I definitely see what you're saying. It's like it's, it almost looks like like an orange color here. Yeah, no, it's pink. 
I can go. I can go put it. All of you listening to this podcast, let us know what you think. (laughs) It's like, yeah, yellow. I'm like, it looks gray to me. It says sack on it, but you guys aren't talking about the shirt he's wearing. So, like the fucking blue, white, gold dress. (laughs) Yeah, I was gonna say it's the new fucking. What color is the dress? That bitch was blue. I'm sorry. I don't know if you guys saw, but that bitch was blue. Yeah. I remember when people were making the videos of it, like fucking with it in Photoshop to like show that like yeah, what the other color looked like. It was pretty cool. <laughs> I'm a fan of that. All right, so let's talk about your being undefeated in fucking verbal insults. Mm. Yeah. Are you? Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I've lost. You? I've lost roast battles before, um, but, but just as far in as Josh main events. But as far as no, main just events, in yeah. just in Josh and Al's thing, I'm undefeated. I actually lost to Josh. Oh, okay. roast. Yeah, I think that that's the only person I've lost to in Sacramento. Actually, yeah, yeah, Josh is the only person to beat me. And I, like, I Josh had some good jokes against me, no doubt. But I just went way too hard on a certain subject, and then like just completely alienated the crowd. Have and, you ever uh, gone up against Jason B? No, you know the thing is like the reason I don't do verbal insults a lot is because well, two things. I, I've written a lot of people's jokes for other people in Sacramento. So, like, even though I've never went against Jason B, I've probably written 10 to 15 jokes with other people for him. Well, that's so good to know. <laughs> yeah, I kind of – I definitely, like, write. Like, people will hit me up to help them write roast jokes. So then, like, when I've already, like, racked my brain on Jason B, it's like I could do more, but it's like I don't – I just don't feel the need to. I've already exercised that muscle. You know, yeah. like I've already tried to break down Jason B. Um, and then the other thing is like, I was talking about it on the verbal insults podcast is like, I get fucking mean the entire time that I'm writing roast jokes and I hate it. Like I will just be, I'll mean, I'll be mean to everybody in my life. Like I'll tell everyone like they're fucking, they have down syndrome and they should die. And it's like, I don't want to be talking to my grandma like this, you know? So it's just, it's like a, it's a, it's a very delicate balance for me. Like, I just don't want to be like, yeah you just don't want to be the fucking asshole in everyone's life and then everyone's like why and you're like i'm doing a like a roast battle for like 50 bucks and so i'm trying to you know it's like that's not worth it (laughs) that's not worth (laughs) alienating relationships with people so i try to keep it to a minimum (laughs) yeah yeah i do i do remember that on the the stream al talking to you about that yeah, it's just tough. I, I don't know if other people go through that or if, like I said, I'm just a fucking head case about it. But yeah, I'll, I'll literally like, I'll go write jokes and I'll be like, man, those were some really good jokes. And I just cannot turn off that mean muscle. Yeah. And I'm just like trying to find like, I'm just making fun of people's shirts and stuff. And it's just fucking. Just yeah, stupid. like I'm trying to like, when I do it, I, uh, I, I get super mean because I'll just be like, all right, what can, what will work, you know, here and there. Yeah. Or like, especially if right. you're just doing it off their clothing or whatever, but. I, yeah. I suck at roast battles. I should have stopped when I won the first one and then stopped. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, they're they're helpful too because if you if you're doing them, like it's 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 a really good display of like your joke writing ability at a pure form because it, I mean it's the most pure to me it's the purest joke you can write. It's that and monologue jokes are the perfect yeah. jokes to write. And they're kind of this, you know, two sides of the same coin in all honesty. Like you're trying to get to the funny with the least amount of words. So um, when you do them, like you fucking, and you, if you're doing them good, like they can be really beneficial to like visibility. So that's why like, I like doing them. I like doing like panel roast. I'll do panel roast all mm. fucking day. But roast battles are tough because like, if you, if like one person is hard, like, and that's probably to be honest, why I win is because like, I'm just a fucking generic looking white dude who's young. I'm not like obese. I'm not like fucked up looking. Yeah, you're hard for the to most roast. part. Yeah, exactly. So people yeah. just are like, "This guy's a rapist," and I'm like, "Yeah, <laughs> okay." How many more? How many more? This guy looks like a rapist. Jokes do you have? Like this guy's too write. chiseled and white. Yeah, like, right. Yeah. Okay. What the fuck? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's just yeah. like you can only say so many times that I look like Brock Turner before the crowd's like, we fucking get it. You know, he grew up and, in El Dorado Hills. Like. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. You know, his parents are rich and I'm like, no, <laughs> like, well, okay, whatever. Like, sure. no, it's going to be jokes. tough to make that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's just, yeah. It's so that's why I end up winning is cause like I, I can just kind of 
fuck with someone's like I can you know I can lock onto people's shit and then it's I, hard to roast a stranger though. Like I do better at the ones that I'm friends with. I, I'm I'm meaner to the ones I know I and love know than weakness. I am. For sure. Well, <laughs> yeah, for sure. I mean, that makes me just more of an asshole though. I it's guess. easy, like you know. But locally, like this is you know. I hope that Al and Josh don't take this personally at all. But like the tough thing about doing roast at a local level is like people will try to get up there and be like hey this guy's mom is a fucking as a hooker and everyone's like is that true we don't know who this guy is at all yeah you know like when you watch like the roast of charlie sheen and they're like charlie's dad has been in platoon and you're like oh yeah i remember that you know but yeah. like with local people you really just rely on exactly what they look like in that moment that's so it's really you're supposed fucking to tough to write yeah. for yeah like it, that's why like roasting locally is it's just tough as shit because like you have to just be like look at the tits on this one you know and then everyone's yeah. just like ah i see your tits too you know <laughs> so now when you're you've also judged it um when you judge yeah. it do you Don't write down some roasts prior for the people or do you just come uh, up with those off the top of your head i'm a fucking nerd dude like i like <laughs> i really like listening to the jokes you know because i like fucking joke writing so like i'll try to listen to the jokes i like if i if i know someone's gonna bomb because most of the time i know who these people are and i can tell when they're gonna fucking suck dick on stage so <laughs> i'll like kind of take note like uh okay this this is not going well and then i'll start formulating jokes in my head i just never think it's funny after like a roast battle when like the two people just went at each other's necks and then the judge is like um yeah, look at you're fat, and it's like, yeah, they just fucking did that to each other. Like, they don't need this from you guys. <laughs> like, we don't. We just saw them, you know, be mean to each other. But like, when when the battle sucks, then I love it. So that's kind of I try to take that mentality into it. Like, if they're going at it, I'll just kind of sit back and just make note of the jokes. But if they're if one person's just like fucking curb stomping someone, I'll definitely write jokes down and like I'll just have my my phone going and you know writing in my note my notepad just mean things to say to him <laughs> yeah. yeah all right um does anybody have anything i don't want to hog up the questions if you got um my question is more in the fill the heart fill my heart but okay. yeah which we're gonna get into in a bit yeah i'll just say here i oh. am gonna jump in the pool here so i am gonna get off screen here in a second while you guys talk about that wow it's way hot. to be way to be fucking professional we have Jeez. another host Later. of a podcast here we're supposed to show him <laughs> How professional we fucking are. It's fucking hot. I'm sitting outside. What do you fucking want? As long as Joey C doesn't fucking just hop on randomly with his hairy chest, we're good. No, I won't let him. All right. So, yes, let's talk about your very popular Fill My Heart podcast. I just have to say, we had Parker on um, shortly after this happened. You were brought mainly to my attention because I saw, I think it was on your Instagram, you reposted a story of someone that was very fucking offended at your show yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. um one, yeah. talk about that because i i heard parker's story but i'm curious what what happened i mean the 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 gist <laughs> of it is that people are fucking stupid like that's really what it boils down to and i know that's like oversimplifying it but basically what happened was me and parker went uh you know like trying to promote the show and we record uh, at Stab on uh, Stab Comedy Theater on Broadway. And so we were at Tower Cafe eating. And we heard these people next to us talking. And they sounded like they were from out of town. And so, like, as we're leaving, I kind of just uh, interrupted their conversation. I was like, hey, it sounds like you guys are from out of town. Is there, if you guys are looking for something to do, we do a, a podcast. We'll be right down the street. It's a, you know, we make fun of Dr. Phil. And, Whenever you say, like, whenever we give the premise of the podcast, people just immediately laugh, which is good. So they're like, oh, yeah, for sure. You know, and so um, podcast was at 10. And so they show, the girl shows up, this lady. And uh, so she, like, is in the back of the room. And we, like, notice her. And I'm like, oh, look, it worked. You know, I'm like, because Parker was like, don't interrupt him. And I'm like, no, I'm going to interrupt him. And so I was kind of rubbing it in his face a little bit. Like, see, it worked. We should do this more. Was he just standing and, in the corner all shyly? Like, I can't believe you're talking to him. Like, Yeah, fucking kind of. Yeah. yeah, Parker just likes to stand in the background when I'm talking right? to other people and not say anything. Yeah. Um, so then we started doing the podcast. And we were doing the podcast about Danielle Brajoli, who was yes. the Cash Me Outside girl. Oh, yes. 
And uh, the episode we were doing was part two of Danielle Brajoli. And so the first clip of Dr. Phil that we watched was after the first taping with Dr. Phil on the flight home that was paid for by Dr. Phil, Danielle Brajoli and her mom got into a fight on the plane with another lady. So the first, the first clip from the, the episode two with Danielle is Dr. Phil talking about that incident on the flight. So me and Parker start watching it. And Parker says something about, um, I forget what exactly what his joke was, but it was basically like, I would rather be on the plane on 9-11 on 9/11. than to be on a flight with uh-huh. <laughs> And then I follow it up with, yeah, I'm way more, I'd be, I'd be way happier to see a Muslim guy with a box cutter than a 14 year old with red hair. (laughs) And that was the joke. And like, it was just a total fucking throwaway line. Like anyone who's ever heard our podcast knows that like, that's the majority of the podcast is me hitting the space bar. Parker saying something, I tag it. We get right back into the play. It's completely throwaway for us. And we actually have watching Dr. Phil. (laughs) It's exactly that. Like, that's exactly what it is. And, uh, so fucking, we made like another comment. It wasn't, definitely wasn't a joke. I, I know that for sure. I don't remember what, it was. I actually should go back and listen. To it. But um, <laughs> it definitely wasn't a joke. But the word rape got mentioned. It, like I said, it wasn't a joke. I think it was just referencing something. Maybe we were talking about how all these celebrities like wanted to fuck Danielle Brajoli and how it was statutory rape. It was something in that like serious of a context you know Nick. and so we have a good show and then i get home it's like midnight and i fucking pull up the pages instagram and i get like a it's like you got a post notification or you're tagged in something so i click on it and this lady like posted a fucking block of text over me and like she took a picture of the show and then posted like a block of text over it that's like wow. this is the most racist misogynistic rape joke Edge lord shit I've ever seen in my life, and so then I just started messaging her. I sent it to Parker, and like my favorite thing about Parker is he's like ultra afraid that we're gonna get canceled, and I'm like, yeah. we do not have a career to get canceled. So oh, like, you guys I'm, are super important. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, there's no fucking way we're gonna get canceled. So I like immediately message her, and I know how to defuse these situations. Like when people sure? who get offended by yeah, because when people. <laughs> When people get offended by comedy, all they're doing is projecting their insecurities. Yeah. All you have to say is like, why are you offended by what I said? And most of the time, like this lady, she was offended by the 9-11 jokes, which is ludicrous. It was fucking 2019. Like we're fucking almost 20 years away from this thing. And yeah. we make jokes about like my mom being a drug, drug addict. We make jokes about Parker fucking dying early of obesity. Like. 9-11 is not necessarily the most offensive thing we're going to say on a single episode, <laughs> let alone fucking the entire podcast so and then when you start talking to her she's like well i'm from new york and i knew people who knew people who died in 9 11 oh like, my god oh, that, sounds, that sounds like maybe you should just avoid comedy in general because yeah. any fucking edgy comedy is going to make jokes and it's like anyone who gets offended by comedy it boils down to the same thing it's like they only care about the shit they care about And so, like, if you just break it down from, like, to them from that perspective, like, I I will never defend a joke I made. Like, that's not my goal at all. I I, I say something and I just fucking let it sit. And whatever the reaction it gets is that. But with this lady, like, she's, like, like, on her profile, we click on her profile, and she had pictures with, like, the dudes from Queer Eye. It was, like, right after the reboot. So I'm, like, oh, fuck, dude. She's, like, calling us homophobes, and she's friends with the dudes from Uh Queer Eye. And I'm like, motherfucker, you know? So I just started talking to her and like, what we kind of landed on is that like, I'm like, yeah, like you're not gonna walk into a movie, a random movie that you've never seen before and love it. Like that's, you know, if and if you don't like it, you just walk out. You don't fucking go home and post about how this movie sucked or, you know, or you wouldn't fucking tell the director to their face that it sucked or whatever, you know? That's kind of the gist I was getting at. And then she ended up like, just really making herself look stupid. She's like, you know, it was like, do you want to apologize for it? And I'm like, fuck no. Like, absolutely <laughs> well, since not. You, like, since you put it like that, no, I'd rather be on a plane during yeah. 9-11. Like, yeah. God, God. It's just fucking sanctimonious garbage. And like, that's the nice thing about getting people into their direct messages is that they end up just fucking backing down and going like, you know, it's all performative. Like anytime you fucking get offended in front of people, it's performative. That's not how offensiveness works. Like if anyone's ever insulted you to your face, you don't immediately start get telling everybody you know about how they 
insulted you. You fucking sit with that in your car and cry about it. You know what I mean? Like that's what being offended is. And so like whenever you see something like online about how this offended me, it's performative. Like I'm not saying they're not actually offended. It's just posting it online is performative. So like when she did that, I was like, yeah, I just know what happens. You get, you get these people into their direct messages and then they fucking end up, you know, pseudo apologizing to you. So that's, that's kind of the gist of what happened. And then it's actually like our most, uh, like you top do, like commented yeah. post or something like it's got like a hundred comments on our Instagram and stuff. So it actually backfired against her. <laughs> he, he actually he actually read it on the show. He's like, yeah, oh, right, yeah. read it. Let me read this. <laughs> I was like, damn. Yeah, we, we did not pull punches. <laughs> and and Parker does so well with the uh, you know just confrontation in general. I could see him being like, oh my god, oh my god. <laughs> yeah, well his his big fear is that like we're like gonna get in trouble and i'm yeah. like you know what man there's not an honest comedian in the world who doesn't understand what just happened yeah like that's the nice thing about it is that like anyone who's being honest anyone who's tried to be funny who's being honest with themselves understands what happened there you know that's what it boils down to for me is like you know if other comics get mad at you it's like well then you guys aren't taking enough risks and i don't even mean that in like terms of edgy material it's just like Sometimes you're going to say stuff that doesn't fit everybody. Yeah, and if, if you're just time. saying stuff, yeah. yeah. If you're just saying stuff that's for everybody, you're not a comedian. You're a fucking Ted talker. Yeah. You know, go, go fucking do something else. Yeah, what don't trouble go to a are you going to get show. into? Sacramento well, trouble, man. <laughs> Parker's whole thing. And like, I, I understand it, you know, especially when you like look back and it's like, this guy got hired to write for Jimmy Fallon and 10 years ago on his friend's YouTube series. Got it. He's, he, you know, he did mild blackface. And then you're like, well, I understand where the fear comes from. I just think that like the big problem is that if people are dishonest about who they are, then that leaves them susceptible to that shit. Like people who are yeah. shit bags and are honest about it, like me and Parker are like, don't get canceled because the people who like us know that we're shit bags. So it's, it's impossible to cancel that. <laughs> like canceling only happens like Patton Oswalt types who <laughs> tell everyone that they're like, you know, that they're going to run for president one day or something, you know? Yeah, Kanye 2020. Oh, my God. <laughs> I, well, I, do love, I do love the episode with you and Amy Estes. That was a good one. And then also yeah. the one with you and um, Robert Amoto. That was, that was, that was cool. Great. Thanks, man. Yeah, dude, you're, you're, you know, you're always at the shows, which is fucking awesome. Thanks. <laughs> yeah, uh, I am there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we love it. We, we love seeing the same people come back because, I mean, it, at least it means that one person – because the numbers of the podcast are so like insignificant in terms of like visibility. Like we don't, we don't do crazy numbers on Instagram or Facebook or Twitter, but then like we do pretty decent numbers on like podcasting. It's like, who are these people? Like we'll get like, you know, we'll get like, you know, 150 hits in New Zealand. And you're like, who the fuck is in New Zealand listening to us talk about like Sacramento issues? You know, it's very bizarre. So like when we see people come back to live shows, it's pretty cool. We like that. So really, Sharon, you go to their podcast all the time, yes. yet when it well, came to our podcast, you were there every other week? I mean, aren't you there anyways doing fat chicks on top? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, oh, that's what it is. Okay, okay. I'll let no, that one yeah. slide. That's wrong. <laughs> I, live, I, I used to live down the block. I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm just, I'm just fucking with you. Yeah, I'm um, doing it very well. <laughs> I, I do got to say, though, your podcast is the most plug podcast on our podcast. Really? How so? Um, How does that work? Well, you know, we're not uh, we're not good. We're <laughs> yeah, we, yes, we are. I, I just tell think everyone. I just think it's funny. Like we had Joey Stoltz. Joey Stoltz did easily fifteen minutes on why your podcast is the best podcast. <laughs> that's yeah. that's very Joey to be very tone deaf of who he's talking to. God. I've seen him do that. I've seen him do that to like my girlfriends. Like I'll bring a girl to a show. And he'll just be like, dude, you could fuck the hottest girls in the world. Like, he'll say stuff like that. I'm like, dude, there's literally a girl right next to me. <laughs> like, why are you doing this? Joey's very tone deaf with who he's talking to. It's funny. Now, one, one question I did have is it seems, do you edit the video beforehand so you know what you're talking about? No. So, Dr. Phil, his team, like, it, that's what spurred the podcast is like, I was working at a shitty job and on my lunch breaks, I'd eat a fucking salad at my desk while watching. So Dr. Phil's team, they clip like each episode into like five, five minute chunks. So 
when we started doing the podcast, like I didn't know that they were going to continue to do that. And so I was planning, I was like, fuck, I'm going to have to download these episodes and then cut the funny parts. But Dr. Phil's team just keeps fucking uploading them, dude. And so like, as long as they're uploading like five, five minute clips of each episode, we're just going to continue to watch them. <laughs> like, it's pretty fucking sweet. Like they do all of the prep work for us. It's pretty great. Now, do you write jokes beforehand or is it sort of spur of the moment when you get there no no we never i mean i watched the episodes just to kind of read where the you know the, the vibe of the show is going because i mean there's been times where we like i'm like this one's called like my daughter can't stop you know partying and then you watch it and it's like she just got molested by every uncle and you're like oh this is not funny <laughs> so like you, you have to be like you have to be like very careful about what you're selecting so I'll watch the episode all the way through. And then if we have a guest on, I'll give it to them as well. Just so you can try to, you know, see you where know the what you're talking about. The, yeah. Yeah. And like, you know, like sometimes there's going to be lulls and then they're followed by a big laugh, you know? So then like you kind of, I, I want to be prepared for that funny part. Um, but Parker doesn't watch him at all. Not, not because of laziness or anything. He just likes being in the moment with it, which I totally get. Um, and like, in fairness, like I kind of wish that I didn't have to watch them because yeah. there's times where like, it I'm like, oh, like, this is boring. Let me check. Yeah. Oh my God. So much Dr. Phil. <laughs> <laughs> and now we've become like pseudo experts on him. So then like, you know, people will be like, Dr. Phil is pretty crazy. And you're like, actually, no, he's a real doctor technically, but he just doesn't have, and like, we just know like about like his first wife. He was established shit. by Oprah and like all this yeah. shit. <laughs> yeah. But so many people don't know that. Some, so many people are just like. He was the guy with the cash me outside girl. It's crazy. How many, uh, I always yeah. thought that Dr. Phil was like pretty established in the zeitgeist, but it doesn't appear that way based on, you know, a few conversations we have. Yeah. Well, who are you talking to? Are you talking to, you know, Suzy Q homemaker? Cause I'm sure it's the zeitgeist for them. Yeah. Right. Well, and that, like, that is the fun part about Dr. Phil is that like his audience is fucking, you know, big like red jerry curl midwest housewives like that's who he fucking does tv for and which my makes the f- <laughs> oh your ex-husband watched it oh my god he loves dr phil he loves him. yeah that's it's it's a little bit like i'm glad that i get to like it ironically because yeah. like i actually do enjoy it but there is something a little bit weird about like men watching it because right. it's not designed for men at all like it'll just like we watched an episode was it last week because men are supposed to be home during the middle of the fucking day. Just, yeah, right. That's No, but that's what it is. It's like it's fucking 3 p.m. our time, noon fucking East Coast. But we watched an episode like two weeks ago where like this dude uh, like got into some tax issues. So his wife started becoming a sugar baby. Ooh. And then like, but Dr. Phil's advice for her wasn't like, well, you should listen to him if he doesn't want you being a sugar baby. It was like, why did you evade taxes? I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. That's not why you guys are here. <laughs> like, <laughs> come, like, fucking, this is Dr. Phil, not H&R Block. Like, talk about the real issue. It's like this husband is mad at his wife going out and, on dates with dudes for like $5,000. Like, that's the problem. Who's going to be mad at that? Come on. Right. Well, I mean, that's a whole different do- yeah. topic. Like, yeah, that was kind of me and Parker. Yeah. Like, I wish I fucking dated someone who was, you know. Right? Hot enough to be a sugar dates. baby? Yeah, exactly. So. Uh, I do love. I, I do love Parker's how you always. Parker's looking really good. Go ahead. Ooh. Sorry, Sean. What? I said Parker's <laughs> looking really good. He's lost a lot of weight. He's, yes. do, he's oh. looking healthy. Yes, it is. Yeah, like yeah. I'm super proud of him. He's yeah. slimming down. I like that. Yeah, yeah. No, I do like that you basically point out like the uh, sometimes they'll do a little bit of a decept, uh, uh, change of hand deception and stuff. Like you deal with the the pig one. Where there's there these pigs were supposed to come over to the show and stuff, yeah. but then you like find out it's actually the husband doesn't like the wife or anymore, and it's like oh okay, well they they try to make this big thing about the pig, but no, it was the it was actually the right, husband, so. yeah, totally right. Well, and like that is a symptom of the the Cash Me Outside girl is like yes. the they'll just title the episode whatever they think is like the most interesting yeah. aspect, even if it's the smallest aspect of the show. Click like they'll have the yeah, exactly. It's yeah. it's it's video clickbait because they'll just like it'll be a, a you know a husband and wife that are fighting and then like one time the husband did porn 
like, you know, when he was like 19 years old and now at 38, he's having marital issues and they'll, they'll like title the episode, mm. like, can a wife forgive her ex porn star's husband? You know, you're like, what the fuck? Like, this is like, <laughs> this guy's not an ex porn star. He like jerked off in front of a camera for a thousand dollars one time. Like, that's I, not really that notable. I went to high school with a guy that was on Dr. Phil with his wife and at our high school reunion, um, he was like, I was on the Dr. Phil show. Like, that's what he was like telling everyone. And we're like, okay. And he's like, yeah. He's like, I was on Dr. Phil. My wife was cheating on me with my brother. And I was like, how'd that work out? And he's like, well, my wife and my brother are married now. And I'm like, oh, Damn. that worked out So well. happy ending. That's good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Parker, Parker went on a date with a girl who was on Dr. Phil, like before we ever did the podcast. We've, we've tried to get her on a couple times, but I think it's just a little bit. Like, if I was someone who, yeah. like, she was on Dr. Phil because, like, she had like serious behavioral issues as a kid. So like, I'm sure that it's probably, you don't really want to revisit that too much. Or she just doesn't want to revisit dating Parker. Yeah, that's probably. (laughs) probably, Probably. Notice how I said she dated him once. That's Uh, what I'm saying. That was was an important (laughs) distinction. Uh, So I do have to ask, how exactly did you pitch this show to Stab? Like, I just want to hear it. I mean, as like as simple as possible. Like, I, I mean, our elevator pitch is really like we make fun of episodes of Doctor Phil. Like, and that's kind of we. So we wanted to. It was originally started. We even had a fucking name for it. It was called. Um, we were going to call it Tinfoil Hats, and it was a podcast where we were going to like read and watch a bunch of stuff about conspiracy theories, and then talk about how like stupid these people are that believe this stuff. You know. <laughs> And then, like, just, like, 30 seconds of research, and we found out there's already a podcast that does that, and it's literally called the Tinfoil Hat Podcast. We were like, fuck. Like, back to the drawing board here. Because we knew that, like, podcasting was, like, the the important thing to get into. So, um, so me and Parker one day just started, like, watching Dr. Phil together. Because we'd meet up and write jokes, and then, like, end up being like, oh, dude, have you ever seen this? And it'd be, like, crazy shit and make fun of it. And then... Uh, yeah, and then, like, we just did that at Starbucks one day, just fucking dying laughing, and then we were like, we should just do this as a podcast, so we took it to Jesse and John, and uh, immediately, they were like, yeah, whatever you guys need, we'll help you out with that, that's very funny, so, and then fucking, like, end of December 2018, it's crazy, it's crazy to think we've been doing it for a year and a half, it doesn't feel, it doesn't feel that significant, <laughs> like, it, it feels like, it feels like it should have been something smaller, but. Do you guys do it once a week or once a month? We do once a week uh, for the Fill My Heart, and then uh, we started a Patreon, um, so we do those once a week as well. So the Patreon episodes, we don't talk about Dr. Phil, like, at all. We, like, just talk about, like, anything else, basically, is on the table. So, like, yeah. Um, But we're fucking dumbasses who started the Patreon. Like, people were like, please, like, how can we, you know, like, we want to, like, fund you guys. And we are like, we we don't know. We want to keep all the content free and stuff. And then, like, the, literally the day after I took second in the last unlimited competition, we started a Patreon. And then, like, the, the Friday, like, it was a Thursday, and then Friday, Davis went shilt. Right, because of COVID? Yeah. Yeah, that's how ours is, too. Like, we've lost, like, half listenership because of no COVID. No commute, no listening. Yep, yep, yep. And, yeah, people at work listen to while they're fucking – driving a forklift into a warehouse wall and shit. And so that, that just don't have that chance anymore. Don't have that chance to fucking commit an OSHA violation. So, <laughs> so y'all, are y'all still doing fill my heart on zoom or what are y'all doing it now? Yeah, uh, no, we, we, <laughs> we've been fucking defying all the orders. Like we just <laughs> keep going to stab and like Jesse's been live streaming them on their Twitch, YouTube and Facebook. Okay. And uh, yeah, so we're still doing it live. I don't think me and Parker's chemistry would work well over Zoom because okay. we'd be we always fucking we shoot for the same joke so often that we'd just be like fucking stepping on each other to get to it. <laughs> so like that was actually something we talked about. I'm like, I don't think I think we'd fucking kill each other if we were doing this on Zoom. Like it would just not be fun. So we we kept doing it live. It was nice. A little bit of sanity through all this. All right. Um, anybody have any questions before we get into our big thing? No, 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 no. no? Okay. Uh, have you listened to the podcast before, Drew? Yeah, I have. I don't know what the big. I don't remember what the big thing is though. Oh. 
Well, we do this thing called Inside the Comic Studio. Okay. Yes. She, did oh, she, she needs to start doing it more. <laughs> yeah, Danny messed up. Um, so before we get into Inside the Comic Studio, plug your social media, plug uh, your podcast, all that stuff. Yeah, uh, on Twitter at Drew Absher, A-B-S-H-E-R. On Instagram at Drew Absher is dumb. On Facebook, Drew Absher, you can add me there. And then um, fucking subscribe to the Patreon. Give us $5 a month. We'll give you four podcasts. Uh, Patreon.com slash fill my heart. All right, Danny. Uh, you can find me at Rad Chick Forever on Instagram or Facebook. Um, hit me up. That's it. Oh, okay, sure. On. Sorry. <laughs> you can find me on um, Iambic Zine. Uh, we're doing Iambic Poetry. Um, I've talked to you about Brandon Leaf, the one that won the, the one the American Got Talent um, show episode. And I'm doing a, I'm also a DJ, so Serious Productions will have a show the next Wednesday, the 15th, over at Rockland, uh, Pink Martini. Either. What, what? All right, uh, Rob. I get my side project, Stand Up Dad's Podcast. I do that with my buddy Mike, comes out every Sunday. And this last one, I give Mike shit for chasing after 20-year-olds, even though he's almost 50. <laughs> and uh, give it a listen. All right, and yeah, just follow me on Twitter at the Big Nick J. All right, inside the Comic Studio is brought to you by Seattle Gummy Company. When you need to be alert and focus fast, Mocha Shots high energy gummies work five times faster than coffee and at half the price. They have some awesome flavors like salted caramel chocolate, Dutch chocolate, mint chocolate, 100 milligrams of caffeine per gummy, which is one cup of coffee, vitamin B complex boost performance and only five grams of sugar per gummy. Use promo code GAG15, save 15% off your entire order. So. It's much better than math. <laughs> inside the comic studio. So what we do is we ask all comedians the same five questions. So the first question is okay. first joke that landed well. First joke that landed well. Holy shit. Um, <laughs> my first joke that landed well is I did a joke about being a sports fan and getting jealous of Make-A-Wish kids because, because I was a sports fan. So, like, I would, the, the joke was that I just was, like, you know, I'd get to, I'd like, watch kids at a Yankee stadium, baseball, you know, they'd get to throw out the first pitch at a Yankees game just because they don't have any arms. Or I would say, like, they get to kick out the first pitch at a Yankees game. And that was, like, the first joke that did well. All right. Uh, favorite thing about the local comedy scene? Shit, man. I think that my favorite thing about the local comedy scene is that, like, people are able to find whatever the fuck they want. Like, I, I truly believe that, like, Sacramento has some of the most diverse senses of humor amongst the comedians. So there's shows where you're doing stuff with people who work completely different rooms, like people you've maybe met, like, four times because they're out doing shit in Arden or they're out doing shit in South Sac or whatever it is. So, so like, yeah. you get to work with people of all different creeds and senses of humor. It's fucking awesome. I love it. All right, now the opposite of that. One thing you dislike or would like to see changed in the local scene? Um, you know what, man? When I started doing it, there was just a lot of uh, people who had been doing it longer than me that were just real standoffish, to be, to put it lightly, and, like, probably call them cunts to be a little bit more serious about it. And, like, I just – one thing that I've always tried to do is just be fucking cool to everybody, like, whether this is the only open mic they'll ever do or if they're going to be the next Chappelle, man. I just try to, you know, whatever, like, whatever experience and advice I can give to people, I try to give that to them if they ask for it and um, keep it moving. But I, I just, I, I wish that some of the older people above me would be a little bit fucking cooler. All right. We actually hear that a lot. Um, favorite local comedian. Shit, man, I got so many favorites. Um, I think that probably I'll try to go off the beaten path a little bit. Um, yeah, I'm trying to think of somebody who's a deeper cut. I'm gonna, I'll say, I'll say David Samuel. David, really? I had him on, we had him on the Patreon yesterday. I mean, he's, you know, it's hard to pick a favorite. I got so many. I mean, you yeah. can go Emma Haney, Becky Lynn, mm. Alfonso Portella. You know, I could, I could go off all yeah. day. But someone that I think that you guys probably don't hear a lot is David Samuel. I think David fucking rocks. I agree with that. 
Oh, you know David Samuel, Danny? I I do. I he told me so we were talking once and I was like, Oh, what high school did you go to? And he's like, I went to Bella Vista and I was like, Oh me too. And then he's like, You're significantly older than me. Like clearly we didn't go at the same time. And I was like, All right, yeah, you're right. Never mind. Yeah, David Rocks, dude. I thought yeah, he was way cool. too much like he like fucking kicked heroin at like twenty. Yeah. Like it's fucking he's he's a fucking interesting cat. I like that guy a lot. All right, and then lastly, advice to new comedians. Um, fucking right, man. Like that's, you know, that's the only reason I'm still doing this shit is because I just kept writing. Even when I was taking those breaks that I alluded to earlier, like I was just still fucking tapping my phone every time I thought of something funny and like, don't get discouraged. Be, you know, every joke that you have that does well is coming from the same place that is every joke that doesn't do well. So like people, I think get discouraged a lot. I remember after I developed like my first five minutes that I did at that punchline show that Kyrie put me on, like that next five felt impossible because nothing mm -hmm. felt funny. I felt like I was just going to have like this five minutes that I was going to do for maybe like four more months and then quit. But I just kept like trying to remind myself that like all of this stuff is coming from the same brain that came up with the fucking funny stuff and just really fucking putting your head down and driving forward with it and not being afraid to change shit up if it's not working. And so I'd say like, yeah, keep writing and be malleable. You know, try to fucking change you, your shit as much as possible. Do you mind if I ask you what your writing process is? Like, do you do you do like the bubble, like the spider web, or do you just write your jokes out nah. like fully? Like, what? I kind of like my my idea behind it is that like I'll try to think of a premise and then try to write six different angles for the premise. Okay. So like, if I'm writing something about like like I'm working on something right now, obviously not on stage, but just in my notes about like why I hate magic. And like, so I'll try to think of like six reasons why I hate magic Aww. and then write those out. And then like what happens more okay. times than not, like if you ever watch like my joke structure, it ends up being like premise, three things, and then a punchline. So that's kind of what I end up landing on most of the time. Like three of the angles suck dick and then three of them are workable. And then I'll just heavy write those ones, try to tag yeah. them the fuck up and make them work. That's cool. I think I've only seen you do it, do comedy one time. Like we don't oh, really? really run in the same circles. But yeah, yeah, right. That's exactly yeah. what I was saying about Sacramento. Like I, yes. I don't, I don't, I think I've seen you maybe do it once or twice too. And it's like, yeah, yeah but I know who you are and I know that. Yeah, exactly. You know, I know what you do and shit. So it's cool. It's my favorite part. It's good to have a comedian on the podcast. Oh, shut yeah, up. Guys, shut up. You guys don't have enough on here. Right. <laughs> well, we only have one technically. <laughs> Danny. <laughs> all right uh anybody else before we go you didn't talk anything about camp are you still doing camp or no yeah so actually like right before all this shit popped off me and a local guy named spencer sellins he's a newer guy oh yeah i like him. that guy's fucking yeah. hilarious dude yeah yeah so me and spencer so spencer started doing a show that was very similar to camp which is a storytelling show Wonderful. um yeah and he started doing wonderlust yeah and i just got tired of fucking trying to book and pack out camp so we like like maybe a week before everything happened we were like hey let's just combine our shows and call it camp wanderlust and Ooh. it's a nice nice enough name for it it's a similar concept so we'll just have fun with it and then uh all this should happen so we actually we were supposed to do one this sunday i mean this friday the 10th and then it got canceled when the new stay-at-home orders went in place so yeah well i think the 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 one we're shooting for uh when everything comes back is emma haney Robert Amoto and then a, another younger guy named Sam Hochalter. So okay. that'll be the lineup when it comes back eventually. So look out for that. It'll be a good show. Nice. Yeah. Anything else, Jerome? <laughs> no. No? All right. Well, Drew, thank you for coming on. I appreciate it so much. Listen to the Fill My Heart podcast. They are amazing. Go see them live whenever the fuck we can see shit live. And thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much, man. All right, guys, okay. you rock. Thanks, man. See you Thank later. You. Bye. Bye. <laughs>